very good morning to everyone, uh, all the experts and stakeholders on the dais, off the dais. Uh, I'm very delighted to be here, and I'm also very grateful to Fiki for uh, actually initiating this discussion. It's timely, it's relevant, and I think that despite uh, all the <coughs> If I may say, conversations around the subject, it requires some sober reflection by us at this point in time. In terms of perspective, and I'm sorry that I am not uh, as poetic as my colleague, Mr. Mishra, so I, am, I will get down to brass tacks right away. As far as e-commerce is concerned, globally, B2B is 90% of it. What we are talking about today is the remaining 10%, B to C. So in terms of scale, when we talk about numbers, we need to understand what we are talking about. But it's important we talk about the B to C. But we recognize that when we talk about the e-commerce opportunity globally, <coughs> what we are addressing here is that 10%, which is consumer-facing. Um, and this 10% is estimated globally at around 2.9 trillion, approximately. And of this, India's B2C e-commerce market is around 20, 25 billion dollars. So we are a tiny, tiny bit piece of what the global scale of, of B2C e-commerce is. Even that is smaller, but <coughs> The India's share in it currently is a very small percentage. That's one. The second is, if you look at India's ranking, and UNCTAD has ranked the B2C position of about 144 countries, India is 83rd. Again, I'm just talking perspective. Let's look where we are. So if India stands at 83rd of 144, what is it that does not allow us to go beyond or up? What is it that we need to address? And this, this is where I think we need to talk about uh, the challenges. <clears throat> the indicators that UNCTAD has used is the total number of internet users as a percentage of the population, the secure servers availability, the actual financial accounts penetration and the reliability of the delivery infrastructure or the postal delivery uh, reliability. So these are the indicators that UNCTAD has used and these are the areas that we will need to address. Currently, if you're looking at just exports because uh, my uh, friend from Amazon talked about the export opportunity and that's important, and that's something that the Department of Commerce wants to look at. So currently, it accounts for around 500 million U.S. dollars. <coughs> what is that? 0.19% of India's exports, and about 1.96% of India's total B2C e-commerce sales. Again currently very, very small. You have to look at it in terms of the scale of what we are talking about. So when we talk about, and this is important, yes, B2C commerce, e-commerce is growing rapidly. It's a very significant area of the economy because it's growing faster than most other sectors. 34% CAGR, it's, it's astonishing. But on what base? It's a very low base that we are talking about. So we we'll have to be realistic when we peg our aspirations. We have to be realistic in the scale of the business that MSME sector does. How big is this? But the opportunity is how big can it be? So in this context of the numbers, and this is just to say where, where do we stand today, 
I think the two things that we need to ask ourselves is, is there an opportunity here? And two, what are the risks for India? What are the challenges for India? I think, I think I would say that we need to confine ourselves in this discussion to these areas. In terms of opportunity, of course, I already said we are growing at 34% uh, CAGR. That's very good news for uh, the big platforms, the big players. Um, the global uh, scale is supposed, expected to grow from the current 2.9 trillion to about 4.4 trillion by 2022. Again, uh, very appreciable growth rate. Now, where, where are the challenges? Today, internet penetration in India, and people have talked about this, is 33%. And there is a very large urban-rural divide. Urban users have access to, about 60% urban users have access to the net. Only 16% of the rural population has access. Broadband is even less. 23% for the country. So <clears throat> that, what does that do? It puts us at the lowest end of the global digital divide. This is what these numbers are saying. India currently stands at the lower end of the global digital divide. We are more complex because we also have an urban-rural digital divide. So. This really is a big challenge. We have Digital India as a big driver of this government. It's a very important area. But it's a journey that we have just begun. The, sec the other piece of this is the financial infrastructure, the financial inclusion. The effort for financial inclusion is, again, a work in progress. The reality of it is how much of the population has access to real financial infrastructure. And so this, again, is something we need to address. We have challenges of unstable power supply, because you can take the networks out there. But power supply is something that has to be uh, completely balanced and the delivery infrastructure, again, into the rural areas. Because this is a population, it's an aspirational population, and there's growth happening. So you cannot plan a system only around uh, the urban population. You're going to have to look at the issues of reaching services and uh, access to e-commerce to the rural population as well. Most important for us at this point of time, and I think as policymakers and also as stakeholders who are at the receiving end, if I may, or uh, part of the architecture of that policy, we do not currently have a national e-commerce policy. And we don't have a consolidated legal framework to deal with it. So if we look to the e-commerce, the requirement of a overarching, and I do not mean to say that we need a very oppressive or a very strong uh, policy, but you do need a broad policy that clearly states what are the key elements, what we will do to make this realize the opportunities. So... So when we talk about access to global markets, you know, for, uh, for everything in trade, when we look at it, the, the real issue is domestic readiness. Are we ready? And if we are not, and the answer to that is we are working at it and we are still working at it, but we are not yet entirely ready, then that is priority number one. The third area that I wanted to flag is that even within the government, okay, we need a policy, we need to push the agenda. Who owns this? Who owns this space even within the government? So in the Department of Commerce, we have quite early been grappling with this issue for the simple reason that the world wants to talk about it. 
the reason we are here today, and I must say, <coughs> uh, you, you, the, the fairly limited number of people in this room reflect that we as a country haven't really begun to grapple with this. That we have been challenged because of, when the world wants to talk about it, we have to look inwards to our own readiness and our willingness. So who do we need to talk with on policy? The Department of IT, the Department of Industrial Policy. The financial sector piece has to be woven by the Department of Revenue, by the Reserve Bank of India. The Department of Posts is a critical part of the delivery infrastructure. And so there are a fairly large number of players in the government itself, or the government, if I may say, in the both regulators and the government. And all these also need to come onto the same page. Um, we also need to look at the MSME, because today we are talking about MSMEs, and while um, there has been tremendous growth and there is tremendous opportunity, what happens really to the MSMEs of developing countries, and no doubt about it, India is certainly a developing country, the data shows that MSMEs of developing countries tend to be limited to the low value activities. The real opportunities go to MSMEs who are either where, located where, where the products are invented, where they are branded, or where they are produced. So you need to look at this. Where do we need to be at the cutting edge of our MSMEs as well? if you're going to take the benefits here. So if the big profits are at that end of the spectrum of MSME, then where do our MSMEs stand? The current data also shows that globally, the share of small firms getting orders on e-commerce platforms is consistently lower than, lower, uh, than larger firms. So there are wonderful stories, and I'm sure there are wonderful stories within this room itself. But that is why in the conversation we had before we walked into this room, I said, you know, we need data, we need evidence to drive it. Good anecdotes and good stories do not evidence make. So we are here not to talk or to sell anything, we are here to actually grapple with what are the serious issues and how should we go about addressing them if we are really to benefit from the opportunity that B2C e-commerce can offer. At the World Trade Organization, and believe me, this is very serious, there has been a move from the late 90s to talk about e-commerce. And there is a current narrative to talk about MSMEs in global trade. Now, what does it mean? The World Trade Organization is not a talk shop, unlike the United Nations, the UNCTAD, and other places. When you go to the World Trade Organization, you're talking about global rules for trade. And when you talk about global rules, you have to be ready. This is not lightly done. So within the WTO, what happened in 1998 was really that it was agreed that countries would engage on the issues with a non-negotiating mandate which means we are not yet ready for rules. Let's talk about definitions. Let's talk about readiness. Let's talk about frameworks first before we get ready for rules. The same thing applies to MSMEs. Getting very excited about MSMEs on the global rulemaking platform is unwise unless you know what you're comparing apples to apples. What's the definition of uh, MSME? in the United States, in Germany, in India. Is there a difference? Are they identical? 
So, you know, these are important issues not to be taken lightly. I flag it here because there is there are so many conversations about this. It's also important to realize why we tend to be careful before taking on commitments, both on e-commerce and on MSME. Of course, we want to engage. Of course, we want to talk about it. But we will not commit until we are domestically ready and our companies are ready to face the global challenges. Even within, and let me say this, we had a, the last ministerial meeting of the WTO at Buenos Aires in December last year. And what happened there in the ministerial was a decision to continue with the non-negotiating mandate. But because this discourse of huge excitement in many countries, some of them formed a plurilateral grouping outside the WTO, which cannot be rule-making. It's a discussion platform. Anyone can join it. That's fair enough. But even here, who's missing? The second largest player in the world, China, not part of this grouping. Why not? It's because the, the aspiration from the e-commerce rule-making is different from the United States and Japan, which you can put into one group. Very different for what the EU wants to see. And there's a third lot of uh, countries which are looking at what China's looking at. So even within the global community, the understanding of what e-commerce needs to be, what should be the role of MSME, how should the rulemaking go, that's still uh, not very clear. So this is where it stands, and many, many countries have remained out, but still this plurilateral grouping has 70 members. It's very large. It's very large. <clears throat> so why, why does, what really is the challenge for us? I really want to sum up here. We need a domestic architecture. We need a domestic policy framework. That's the first path on beginning to address challenge. Two, we have to work harder on our digital India, on the actual infrastructure. The Bharat net has to happen. And when that happens, then I have a backbone that allows me to allow e-commerce services across the country. I have to work on financial penetration, real financial penetration. That's huge. And our banking sector has to rise to that challenge. We need infrastructure for delivery. So the infrastructure is not just the telecom. There is more needed. And therefore, I think that we have challenges. We have a great opportunity. It's time at this moment as we are positive, and there is a lot of positive energy happening. The growth rates are amazing, and many, many, many players will benefit. We should continue to do this. But we should understand that we will have to grapple with our challenges. All of us, in a small or large way, need to address those challenges every day so that we are ready and that we are able to be a truly substantial player in the global B2C e-commerce space. So thank you very much for your attention.